Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Coming to you tonight, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. My name is John Mark Tolley, and joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Ray Rumsey. Ray, how are you today, sir? I'm all right. How's everybody doing today? We're doing pretty good. And also joining us back once again after his... uh, Fourier with us here is the host of the Star Wars Canon Podcast, Mr. Brian Miller. Brian, sir, how are you? I am. I've made it this far. <laughs> so <laughs> this 20, 2020 can... is almost over, so we've made it this far. Uh, All right. Let me remind you, though, though that um, the original Mad Max takes place in 2021. Oh, oh good. Oh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I knew all that scrap metal I was holding on to was going to come in handy. <laughs> all right. Well, I think we should start off this one by me saying Star War. War. Sorry, I will stop now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was bad. I. I I apologize to all the listeners out there. <laughs> I promise that will never happen again. <laughs> um, but yeah, like we talked about last week, this episode, we're going to be talking about Star Wars, the war part of Star Wars and looking at it from the viewpoint of those that have actually served. Now, I myself had not served, but um, Brian and Ray have both served. So, Real quickly, why don't you both give kind of rundown of your service and what you did, Brian? Why don't you start with you? Uh, your his, your military history. Well, I I joined the military yeah, and uh, oh, just got a feedback. Right, hold on, there we go. Way to go, Ray. <laughs> uh, no, I joined the army. What did you do, Ray? Ray, nothing. I'm having Ghostbusters <laughs> flashbacks right now. What did you do, Ray? Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, so I joined the military in 2010. Uh, I was in for two and a half, three years. Uh, I was a 19 kilo. I drove an Abrams uh, battle tank, uh, deployed to Iraq once, uh, came home. And, and I, I, the only reason I really got out of the military was because I lost my dad in early 2012. And my first contract was up later that year. And my family was kind of struggling. So I, uh, I, I got out just basically to go home and take care of them. So uh, but in a nutshell, that's that's really what I did. All right. And Ray, what about you? What is your military history? Uh, I joined the Air Force in 2003. I toughed it out for 14 years. I was an aircraft mechanic the whole time, uh, working on the fighter jets, two different airframes. I did the 15s and 16s. Um, yeah, I, I got out. Because it was time to finish things up with the military and start a new chapter and start podcasting and voice acting. So it, it was just a cool. natural progression. Nice. Yeah. Well, like I said, I myself have no history uh, with the military. My nephew just recently got out of the army uh, after doing two years in the or uh, four years in the military police. I have a cousin that is a ranger. He's a lieutenant in the U.S. Army and is a uh, uh, ranger, U.S. Ra- Army ranger. Uh, my dad was a combat engineer, uh, drove a deuce and a half in a Jeep, and my grandfather was in the Army during World War II and uh, worked on a ra- on a uh, transport train, was an engineer on a train. And my wife's grandpa uh, was on a minesweeper in the, in the Pacific. Wow. Um, so, and with my family, I can trace it all the way back to the revolution. Dang. So, um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so looking at this through the lens of Star Wars and the military structure on both the Empire and the Rebellion and the Republic, um, there's a few things I want to kind of get your thoughts on is... Uh, like especially when you see scenes of the hierarchy and the imperial navy and imperial military, is there anything that you recognize? Like, 
I recognize that or like the structure, the way the structure, the way the officers deal with subordinates. Is there anything, especially within the empire? Well, let's start with, let's not go to the empire. Let's go to the clone wars and the clones. Cause I think that the clone wars, especially is really where you see military, um, you know, what are some things that you look at when you watch the clone wars as former military that you're like, I recognize that that's something that happened to me or incidents. Is there anything in particular? Uh, Ray, you want to go first or? Um, no, no, you can field this one. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I guess a good example would be a lot of the guerrilla warfare that you see during clone wars on yeah. planets like Felucia and stuff like that. And, and uh, even the Ambara episodes, a lot of that kind of <laughs> guerrilla warfare that was going on. And you see some of it in Rogue One also. Um, yeah. But what's what's interesting is kind of the point of view that Star Wars is kind of told from how the how all the uniform troopers are the bad guys and the guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. is are, are the good guys. You know what I mean? And, and when you're in the military, yeah. it's always the opposite. <laughs> It's, it's that opposite mindset, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And when you watch something like Star Wars, you're like, geez, what, you know, sometimes you can't help but to ask yourself, what, was I doing the right thing being there and doing that? And and and, and kind of like what Hans said in, in the solo film when he said, you know, we're the hostiles, we're the ones that are invading. And it, it, yeah. something like that can kind of strike home sometimes if, you, if you're not paying attention and it just kind of catches you off guard. Yeah, yeah, true. True, but it, yeah. to be fair though, at that point in time, the clones were kind of technically the good guys, right? I mean, at yeah. that immediate yeah. moment, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's why I kind of started with the Clone Wars because of you know until we get to like Rogue One and Solo, um, you know, the war is always seen from. <sighs> you see very little of the actual war. Like you see the heroic side of it, the, the like, especially teams. with yeah. four, five and six, you know, you see, or as with the clone wars, you know, there's a lot of episodes where you're on the ground with the grunt, so to speak, you know, you're, you're in the, in the thick of the battle with the clones mm-hmm. and how, you know, like, like for someone like me, I don't know what it's like to have that camaraderie of, of your art, of your, you know, your buddies on your case and, and your tank, your crew in the tank mm-hmm. or your, you know, whatever it is, your fox, you know, in the foxholes or whatever. Um, but you kind of see a little bit of that with Clone Wars. You know, you see the relationship between, you know, Rex and Fives and all those guys. And I mean, is that something that, ha- you know, that again, you can see like, oh, yeah, I can see that kind of relationship bonding, especially within combat. Mm hmm. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, because some of the guys, at least from my experience, a lot of the guys that were in my unit once I got to my duty station out of basic, some of those guys I went to basic training with and they got the same duty station. I did the same unit, same assignment, everything. And so when you go through basic training together and and not all of us went through basic together, but that's that's a really good foundation for, you know, starting kind of that friendship and that and that brotherhood and then moving on to the, the graduating to the bigger aspects you know, when you're deploying and you're actually dealing with, with, with the, the thick of it and whatnot and having that Mm. kind of history together, it can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse at the same time where you, you've got your buddy watching your back, but you know, you have to watch your buddy's back as well. But if something happens, you know, it's, it's, you you see a lot of the clones go through, especially with fives. I don't want to like do any spoilers for season Mm. seven of clone wars. If nobody's seen it yet, but knowing that Fives was still alive and and kind of Rex's reaction to that and, and trying to find him, that was that was a big deal. You know, or not yeah. Fives, Echo. I mean Echo. Echo. When, when you found yeah. that Echo was still alive. That that was kind of a big deal, you know, and, and it's something that yeah, you can definitely relate to something like that. For sure. Yeah. Misery loves company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you have to embrace the suck together exactly and that's what it is because you know the guy next to you is going through the same thing you are and it makes it a little easier somehow for you to kind of bear it knowing right. that yeah 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 
absolutely true. All right. Yeah. And one thing I liked about the Clone Wars, you know, while we're talking about, you know, bringing the the war back into Star Wars is how they did the um, intros and how they kind of took a, a note from like back in World War One, World War Two, where they had these like propaganda recruitment videos with the you know yeah. they got that transatlantic accent going on and they're like only you can prevent the enemy from winning you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah well, it was also a throwback to the old serial you know George, George's childhood the old uh, old uh, movie serials you know like you know um um Flash Gordon where they'd be like last time on Flash right, Gordon yeah our hero, our intrepid heroes were lost in the wood, lost in the jungle, mm-hmm. about to be beset by evil henchmen. And then what will happen? And then, you know, so it was a, it was a play on that, but also a play on the opening crawl. But instead of actually seeing the opening crawl, you were hearing the opening crawl yeah. being, being done. But yeah, it was definitely done in the style of, you know, if you would look at it from a, if you know the Clone Wars is you know Star Wars is being in a real universe and real Clone Wars was propaganda film, mm-hmm. um, you know especially any any you know, especially if you're looking at anything dealing with the Jedi that was definitely very much you know propaganda you know pro Republic you know right type thing, um, which you know yeah. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, the one movie, the one of the movies where you really, of course, see the war brought to fruition was Rogue One. Um, I mean, even right down to the to how the rebels are dressed when they hit the ground on on, uh, Scar- on uh, the Battle of Scarif. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that looked right out of like Apocalypse Now, Vietnam, <laughs> like the helmets look like. I was like, those look like actual army helmets. Yeah, like, that's not like a Star Wars thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that looks like it, actual. It had a bit of a Normandy <laughs> feel to it, a little bit. Right, just just, just a little bit. It was there, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it was like it was like you take like you know storming the beaches at Normandy with like you know landing in the helicopters in the jungle in Vietnam, mm-hmm. you know, the landing zones in Vietnam. You know, if you ever watched like We Were Soldiers and you see the the helicopters landing and the the clearing and the soldiers jumping out. I kind of got that vibe too of like, you know, you know, the, the, um, the U wing of being sort of like a bit, you know, a giant helicopter, a helicopter landing on in the uh, landing zone to deploy the troop, deploy their uh, platoons (laughs) out. Right. Um, But, you know, it seems to me that at least with the rebels, it's a very, like you have, you know, leadership, you know, you have like generals and, um, you know, military ranks, but it seems much more looser than at least at this point than you have with the empire where the empire is very rigid, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a very rigid hierarchy and there's no questioning the authority. When an order comes down, you do it no matter what. There's no questioning. There's just, that's your order. You do it. Um, Which, of course, we're going to be all over the place, folks, with this episode. So I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, The one thing that I've been wanting to to get your guys' thoughts on is the infamous scene in Last Jedi with Poe. And getting demoted and being told basically by Hondo, this is need to know, you don't need to know. Now, what was your thought on that scene from both of you guys, from some from two people that have been in the military? Who was right and who was wrong in that instance? Was that something that that uh Haldo had every right to set to tell Poe to tell Poe Dameron, I don't have to tell you jack squat. Or was Poe right in the sense of being like, hey, I've been part of this for longer, you know, let me, you know, Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, who was who was right in that one? Or was it one of those scenes that neither one was really right or really wrong? I you know, that's one of the scenes that I do defend in Last Jedi. It, I was one of those guys that did like Last Jedi and and I caught a lot of cra- crap yeah. for it. And one of those scenes everybody that was one of the scenes everybody had a problem with. Why didn't she just tell him what was going on? There's a lot of reasons why she didn't tell him what was going on. She outranked him. He was a co- he didn't need to know yeah. what was going on, you know, because especially because of his behavior. He was a flyboy. He was reckless. He was impulsive, you know. And she had every reason to not tell him what was going on. There yeah. could have been moles in in the in the resistance for the first exactly. Order. And and who knows, you know, who would have yeah. found out what the plan was in the long run. So she had he had just disobeyed a direct mm-hmm. order had been from his commanding off his then commanding officer he had been demoted by that commanding off that commanding officer lost the entire bombing and now plane. that there's a, now that there yeah. was a new commanding officer yeah he she did he basically you know she didn't have to tell him yeah she was no longer <laughs> yeah. part of the command staff so because if you're not going to listen to the commander you've been with this entire time what makes anybody think you're going to listen to the commander that just walked onto the scene you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was one of the, I completely defended that. And then the way he acted towards all that just made him look like such an asshole. Yeah. Just the entire time, just yeah. egotistical, just <coughs> asshole. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Now, this also begs the question of as what do you, what do you do? when someone gives you an order and you can see this even from from people that might have been in the uh in, in empire someone gives you an order that in your in your gut you know this isn't right you know what what at least with the american military what what do they tell you if like a if a, a you know your commanding officer says i want you to do this and you're like yeah i don't feel either morally or whatever mm-hmm is you know as long as the how how does the army tell you to do as that? long as the, the, or how does the order military... itself is lawful then you as a military member are required to follow it right but if that order is not lawful like in the case of say crossing streams let's go uh, running man when they tell him open fire on civilians and he says no mm-hmm. Like he was in the right in that that situation. Like right. you, you can yeah. say no if it's an unlawful order, right? There's you know there's there's lawful, unlawful, direct and indirect mm-hmm. orders, and 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 yeah. yeah, if if it's not a lawful order, you yeah you can dispute it. You know you're probably gonna have to jump through a lot of BS hoops, hoops and a bunch of litigation and stuff afterwards, but. You got to, you know, if it's what you feel is right, that's what you got to feel is right. And somebody else is going to make that decision for you, whether it was mm-hmm. right or wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, it's, yeah. it's just, yeah. you got to take that risk. You got to yeah. roll the dice. Right. Yeah. That's exactly it. You, you got to yeah. hope that you're, you're actually right in this, this particular case. <laughs> you better pray to God you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pray, oh, please. Oh, um yeah this is <laughs> you know i i actually oh, kind of uh if you don't mind i kind of have a question it's something i talked about with uh some guys before back in the military and now that you know brian's here and he's had some experience with you know uh not necessarily troop transport but heavy equipment um do you think like the atat was even a viable option for troop transport. <laughs> uh, well, first off, I want to say thank you for calling it an ATAT and and and, <laughs> not, not, the, and, and not a not a nat at. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I do want to thank you for that. I still stand by oh, that. Oh God, no, <laughs> Jesus, uh, no, it it's not viable. You you're talking about a galaxy that has hovercrafts and 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 speeders and pod racers and and spaceships and and starships mm-hmm. and, and 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 death stars and you couldn't make a transport without legs <laughs> like for a for real like it makes zero sense to have a transport with legs yeah that, see that's what we were kind of thinking but i was like you know I'll- the thing was more for, for intimidation factor 
Yeah, you see this giant it's a elephant massive type thing that's... design flaw. Cool. The thing is it's so cool. top heavy. It's not even right. funny. Like the like the ATTE in the prequels, like the six legged one, look more like a beetle. That thing was cool. Like it wasn't top heavy. It was yeah. low to the ground, low center of gravity. It makes that, but the ATAT was just five times taller than it was wide. It's just begging to get knocked over. Well, yeah. Even the precur the, the Clone War precursor, I can't remember what it was called, to the uh, ATST, the 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 little two legged uh, thing. Even that, even the Clone War version of yeah. that looked more viable than the uh, than what you got in the Empire. Although I still say. Mandalorian last season did actually make the ATST, ATST look terrifying. It did. I'll give that, you that. Yeah, that was, had a lot to do with that good. red light. It had a lot to do with that red light coming oh, through the windows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but with yeah. the technology um, that is, you know, yeah, they still got their speeders and stuff, but it seems like they're a little more rare now mm-hmm. in the Mando. So like that that mm-hmm. thing looked intimidating. Like yeah. this thing's gonna wreck somebody. Well, like I like I was saying, um, in that was the way. By the way, check out that was the way. Our Mandalorian after show. Um, a lot of that had to do with the way both Kara Dune, Dune and um, Mando talked it up. Yeah, like when they come back to the village, <laughs> and the first thing he says is, "Well, bad news, y'all gotta leave." <laughs> and then I think it was Kara that sold it. Car by telling you like, hey, these things have taken. I've seen these things take out. One of these things take out an entire platoon. You do not want to mess with this. I've thing. also seen two Ewoks take that out. That made yeah. it. This is true. This is true. Yeah. This, yes. Um, also, they're but they're easy enough to pilot that, that a Wookiee can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, Ewoks too, because they seem to be kind of taking over the controls for yeah. a while. You, you know, true. that that always made me wonder. The Ewoks were so primitive, but yet they knew how to pilot the, the ATST. They could use the speeder bike. Like, what exactly is going on with these Ewoks? Never trust the Ewoks. <laughs> Savages. Cannibalistic little teddy bears. Oh, yeah. Savages. Yes, which always kind of cracked me yeah, up. I swear they were. They, uh, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you got those stormtrooper helmets. Yeah, you're, you're going to eat your enemies. And they were feasting on something. You're eat your enemies and then use their helmets that may or may not have still had the heads in them as bongo drums for your celebration. <laughs> like that's that's awesome. Did they have my respect? Yeah, yeah. That was. I think that was one of those little mm-hmm. things that. Lucas put in the movie that people just kind of glossed over. They didn't really think about that too much. Yeah. They, could, they were going to cook them alive. And the fact that everybody else seemed to be having a you know, what, what were they feeding the uh, the the rest of the uh, the rebels yeah. Yeah. at their little feast it was afterwards? The it's like, man. Yeah. No, no, it's chicken, I promise. <laughs> it's chicken. Yeah. Are you sure? Is that a fingernail? Right. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and furthermore, One thing not only I think... were they going to cook them alive, but Leia flat told them these are my friends, and they're like, "We don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. They're just going <laughs> well, to. Well, anyway. oh, you'll get new friends. Won't be. It your wasn't friends. until. <laughs> like... It wasn't until three PO started. Yeah. 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 But yeah that it just it always seemed weird to me to have, with the exception of the beetle, uh, you know transport with legs i don't know it just it was weird to me yeah yeah because yeah. a I lot did. of the tank even the tanks in episode one didn't have legs right the the no. m the 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 mtt's they didn't have any legs they, they didn't have wheels they just hovered why <laughs> why wasn't now, still hovering the droids, <laughs> the droids did have the giant spider thing yeah with a huge they had more of a crew. spread out now, those base though like yeah, yeah, but still, it was one of those things. You take out one leg, and that thing is just right. Uh, yeah, you know, design flaws galore. Yeah, I did like the gunships, though. Those were pretty legit. Yeah, those. Yeah, they 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 really did. Yeah, it was like somebody was looking around, found a bound uh, a binder clip on their desk, and was like, "I'm going to turn that into a spaceship." <laughs> and it was perfect. It actually really worked well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 
It was pretty legit. But you know, you know, which makes me wonder why the Empire didn't didn't you know mod because they seem to modify the Venator class Star Destroyer into you know you can see the you know, the design moving from Venator class to Victory and then Imperial class. You can see that you know that design mm-hmm. the wedge shaped design going on, um, and you can see like from you know from the the arc, uh, I think it was the arc. Um, Starfighter into the X Wing. You can see the Jedi Starfighter the wing into the tie. morphing into the tie. Yeah. The tie. You know, you can see these different, you know, the Z95, you know, the HUD, the, the, the headhunter, you can see that morphing into the X Wing mm-hmm. too. Yeah. You can see these different things, but there's nothing that goes from like the, um, but yet they didn't, ca- you think, especially, you know, that the Empire would have kept, you know, some form of that. Well, of the gunship, uh, of the gunship, the they gunship. kind of did, yeah, a little bit. It they altered it a little bit, but you see them in Rebels a lot, uh, and, and they were in Jedi Fallen Order quite a bit. It was that that I don't remember what they call them, but mm. it's that that starship, that uh, starship, that transport that Hera and 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 Ezra were on when Kanan was holding back oh, the, yeah. the explosion. They they still ha- kind of had a version okay. of it a little bit, mm-hmm. but honestly, I, I can't blame you for not thinking of that because I didn't think about that either until just now. It never dawned yeah. on me that that's well, an Imperial I know in gunship. The old, yeah. In the in the, in Rebels or not Rebels, but in the old Legends in the uh, X Wing games, one of the Imperial ships you could fought you could you you had to fight against were gunships, mm-hmm. uh, Imperial gunships. Uh, which they basically just looked like the the Lombata class shuttle, except they took off the 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 wings that were like that, and then the fin. So it was just the body mm-hmm. of it. Um, but you had to fight against those a lot of times. But I think also I think one reason why you might not have seen as much of them is after the Empire take took over, the the job of the of the Imperial Navy changed dramatically it went from trying to win these battles you know in this in this war to putting out fires Mm -hmm. so it was more suppressing rebellion you know going you know instead of going out trying to conquer the galaxy or you know fight these you know huge set piece battles like you were with you know it was deal it was the warfare changed. Mm-hmm. So the type of ships they were using, the type of, you know, what they were trying to do would have changed too. It would have been from, you know, stuff that was bigger um, to intimidate, you know, cause that was the whole purpose of the Imperial Star Destroyer mm-hmm. was to intimidate, you know, you, that thing comes over your, into your system. That's going to be pretty intimidating. Mm-hmm. So I think that was part of it too, is just the, the military doctrine changed yeah. from what it was during the Clone Wars to what it became during the um, the Galactic mm-hmm. Civil War. Well, the motivations changed too, and the end game. You know, a, a lot of that. Yeah, it had to change. It had to evolve uh, with with what they were dealing with. Because remember, the Rebel Alliance wasn't a thing until like four or five years, not even four or five years before A New Hope. Right. You know, so there was a period yeah. of time there where the Empire really had an ironclad fist on the galaxy. Yeah. Where they didn't have anybody yeah. really rising up against them. They were the law. That was it. <laughs> like when you see Solo, the mm-hmm. Rebel Alliance is still in its very infant years. Infancy. You know, yeah. and because I mean, infant yeah. I mean, you you still had, you had like little, like you had like the Free of the Rile off right. movement. But that wasn't for the galaxy. That was um, for their one planet. For their You know world. what I mean? That wasn't yeah, a bigger see, like, picture kind of rebellion. Yeah, each each little planet was had almost had like their own little mini rebellion, mm-hmm. and that's what the Empire was having to deal with. Was like, okay, there's something going on on Ryloth. We'll send some, you know, a start a couple of star destroyers over here to deal mm-hmm. with this. You know, it was more projecting power, projecting trying to project influence, right. and you know, just small mop. You know, what they considered to be small mop up jobs. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that I was thinking too that I would love to see either a book deal, maybe a book or a comic or, you know, a future series deal with is 
this idea, and you, you especially saw this a lot during the American Civil War with brother versus brother, family versus family, that aspect of the Galactic Civil mm-hmm. War. Mm. You know, that you, you know, having, you know, that it did probably did divide families. Mm-hmm. You probably did have member, you know, family members who fought know, on joined the sides. empire, fought for the empire, and then others that were like, no, I'm fighting for the rebellion, you know, and that aspect of a civil war, because you know, I think you know what we see of I think you see a little bit more in rebels, but you don't really get never really get that aspect of the galactic civil you war. You don't get you don't get that like a personal war. Yeah. That personal side yeah. of it. You just you just basically you know, and, yeah. and it's always and it's always, you know, for the most part, it's always very cut yeah. and dry. Empire bad, rebels yeah. good. You know, it's always just that cut and dry. And you know, there's a I can't remember the name of it. There's a a, a short fan film someone made, and it takes place. It's it's supposed to take place during the Battle of Jetta, not Battle of Jetta, um, Battle of Jakku. And it's these all these four stormtroopers, and they're they're getting ready. They're in their in their transport going down to the surface. Uh, and they're all talking about why they got in. You know, one guy's like, oh, I got in, you know, because it was good pay, you know, they're going to pay me good, you know. And another guy, you know, they're all got these different reasons. And they asked finally, asked the, the last guy's silent. And there's like, you know, well, why do you get in? He's like, my brother was an indoor. My brother was in the Death Star. Mm-hmm. I saw him as he went off. I, yeah, I remember seeing him. Being so happy, you know, to be a part of the of the of the you know in, in, the Imperial Stormtrooper. That's why I joined. You know, I saw what happened with my brothers, like, and you know, to get that kind of point of grade that not everyone that joins the Empire is evil, right. but different people join for different reasons. And I'm like, wow. I mean, I saw that, like, yeah, I could see that causing someone to, you know, your brother is in you know part of the you know. In, in the empire joins the empire gets stationed to the second death star and then ends up getting killed mm-hmm. you know i can see how that would turn somebody <laughs> be like yeah i want to kill me some rebel bats. well remember yeah. luke luke was going to join the imperial academy too yeah and a new hope he was yeah. getting ready to he wanted to get yeah. off tattooing to go to the academy when uncle owen tells him you know you can go to yeah. the academy next year <laughs> And that that was the Imperial yeah. Academy that he was going to go to. Yeah. You know, and Biggs, yeah. Biggs when he visited, and, and there were some deleted scenes from A New Hope where Biggs came back on, mm-hmm. you know, and, and on leave and, and visited. He was still an Imperial at that point. He had shore leave and he told yeah. them, hey, we're getting ready to be some guy like guys. We're going to jump ship. And apparently that happened somewhere during A New Hope because, you know, he runs into him <coughs> on Yavin. Yeah. You know, so there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of little details there that I don't think a lot of people catch on to that the Imperial Academy was an option for everybody. It didn't matter what side you wanted yeah. that you thought you were going to be on. Cause Luke even goes on to say in, in a new hope, you know, it's not that I like the empire. I hate it, but there's nothing I can do about it right now, but he was still going to join yeah. it. Right. You know? Yeah. So, he's going to be. Yeah. You just got to meet yeah. those height requirements is all. <laughs> he was a little short. <laughs> short. Yeah. <laughs> Storm, you know, Tie Fighter pilot, you know those, those have long life. I'm sure those had you know long life expectancies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, little flying death. <laughs> you have a yeah. one mission in life expectancy. You know that's that's a what if story. I wouldn't mind seeing. Like, what hmm. if Luke had actually joined the Imperial Academy? What if Uncle Owen was like, you know what, you want to go? Oh. I'll, I'll make plans to get you off planet. We'll get you going. You know, if you really want to do this, and then see how that would have went with luke because if luke was such a great pilot you know he would have ended up being a tie fighter pilot would he have yeah. been you know I, I don't know there's just there's a lot of stuff that would be really cool about that and yeah especially see it from his point of view seeing what the empire is doing would he have ended up jumping ship you know what i mean with with bigs mm-hmm. or whatever and 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 going from there yeah sorry just side there's thought. a no it's, yeah, yeah. It's a good side thought that, there's a really good um it was a little short novella that came out. It initially came out with the the old Tie Fighter game um, for, for the PC, and 
it was really it was again it was really cool because it it told the story from like tie like the game tie fighter did you know from the imperial point of view but it dealt with this it takes place it starts out on this planet that's been racked with civil you know civil war and unrest for year you know years you know the government's corrupt you know everything and it's this kid he's a um a swoop bike oh. pilot you know races swoop bikes uh for money on the, on the underground and you know it's just chaos everything like that and then an imperial star destroyer shows up and broadcast basically said basically you know lays down the law and says you know we're here cut your crap we're taking we're in charge now and it's but the way they did it from his point of view it's like oh, hey this is a good thing you know our our planet was in chaos we had you know no government people were okay. killing each other daily now we have order now we have law you know order you know yeah sure we lost a few freedoms but you know hey you know, what's what's a few freedoms for you know mm-hmm. um but he becomes a tie fighter pilot they even talk about the idea of that you know yeah a tie fighter pilot you don't have that long of a life expectancy as a tie fighter pilot <laughs> but you know again that goes back to the old you know even the old world war ii world war one fighter pilots you know i think during the first world war the life expectancy of a fighter pilot was two weeks i believe wow. it that was the average life expectancy was two weeks uh during the first world war i think it went up well um the memphis bell you know it, she became famous because she was the first bomber to complete her mission mm-hmm. To go through her entire, you know, all of all, I think it was, I can't remember how many weeks it was, but like something like 18 missions. You have to do like 18 missions. And once you get done with those eight, maybe in 14, 14 missions, you rotate it out. Mm-hmm. But up to that point, no crew had completed all, all their missions to be rotated out. So, you know, I think, yeah, it's, um, Anyway, well, we kind of talked about bombers last time around. Um, last we did, know. we did, we yeah, and the big oh, you mean the ones that were useless in uh, the big giant <laughs> yeah. bombers that were pretty much useless in the yeah, squadron, the, last Jedi, the completely useless ones. Yeah, yeah, I still say, I still say that the Y wings would have been much better utilized during mm-hmm. that, you know, faster. Other than, you know, the giant, which, like I said before, I know what they were going for. Again, they were going, you know, for the old World War II, B-29, B-17, flying over, dropping the tons of bombs. You know, they're going for that type of Mm -hmm. look. But I think that would have been better if they were going against a a planet. Mm Mm-hmm. Like if they found the Imperial, a, a, a new a, a first order base on a planet, and then the bombers come, the giant bombers come over and drop their bombs on the base mm-hmm. on the planet, that would have been more realistic than, you know, trying to do it against a starship in space mm-hmm. that's moving to, it's just kind of like, eh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't. My thing is, it's space. There's no weight, there's no gravity, no yeah. friction. Like, why are they going so slow? <laughs> yeah, like you'd think that they'd just be boogieing right along like anybody else. <laughs> you would think, you know, yeah. With I mean, it's funny you brought that up actually because I didn't think of it that way. They're bulky, so what? They're in space. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's no yeah. Newton's law <laughs> thinks they're going to keep moving. And until... of course, if you want to get really technical when it comes to physics, the space battles would be so boring with no sound. I mean, this is true. Yes. They would. This is, it's. This is. I don't know. Just a thought. But yeah, but it was funny <laughs> yeah. too because they always talked about how the Y wing was the same way, even in the classic trilogy, handled like a brick. It was just bulky in space. It was heavy. It didn't want to turn worth a damn. Like it. Why is that a thing in space? Right. You're this right. Why is that turn on a dime? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Every every shift would have been. And can anybody explain to me why? The blaster bolts in Last Jedi were arching 
<laughs> when they were firing him. I, nobody can give me an explanation on that yet. <laughs> but I, like, I loved The Last Jedi when it came out. Loved, past tense. I loved The Last Jedi when it came out. But I, I can't defend the the cannonball yeah. turbo lasers. I can't. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. that is one thing you're with you talking about sound, no sound in space. That is one thing I will say that I I did notice one of the few times I watched the 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 new Battlestar Galactica is they did have the space battles. It did have no sound. Really? Like whenever they would fire fire the fire like the late you know the the lasers or whatever. There was no sound like when they show like the outside when they're in the cockpit you would still hear sounds but they're outside I never heard anything it was silent oh gosh that's cool I, you never heard anything you know, like like okay that's kind of cool I think they did that in uh, Firefly as well like when oh the they, no sound in what yeah. yeah I think you're right but yeah I, I'm gonna have to next time I watch the movies every time there's a space battle I'm just gonna mute the TV and. <laughs> <laughs> See how that plays <laughs> out. Here, Peter Griffin in your head, you go. Yeah, there's all kinds. But of... I mean, but then again, you lose all those, you know, iconic sounds like the the the, the Tie Fighters Screaming. flying by. Right. <laughs> The but only why, thing but you, see, yeah. you see shots of TIE fighters at Atmo. Like, why can't you just hear it there? And then when it gets to space, just nothing. You know, yeah. like have all the sound effects in Atmo, but like like Star Killer Base. Most of that at, that most of that battle was in atmosphere. It wasn't technically a space battle. I mean, yeah. it looked kind of like one, but it wasn't technically in space. So you should be able to hear all that. But then when you get the last Jedi or Rise of Skywalker, why why you know why? like why? Mm-hmm. why you know the only thing i can figure with the blaster bolts is if you've ever played darts you don't throw the dart straight ahead you kind of lob it so maybe yeah. that improves accuracy i don't know maybe <laughs> and, and but you know i i somebody even said what was the gravity of of the planet there was no planet around them when they right. were when they were shooting it so i don't I don't know. You but just got to bend the bullet. Again, I just always have to. Oh yeah. I just always have to remind remind people that you know we're dealing with a show that is about you know laser sword wielding space. It wizards. happened. It's real. A long time Uh-oh. ago in a galaxy far, far away, <laughs> yeah. it happened. It it's happened. True. All Mark, of it. Yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> Last summer. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Fight me. I will die on that hill. Yeah. Right. On. <laughs> yeah. Kind of going back to what you were saying before, though, especially with the military aspect of things, uh, I feel like the uh, rebels were more like what would be a militia in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. They have some semblance of structure, but it's pretty much just anybody's off doing whatever they want to do kind of thing and you know you get the sense yeah. that they're they feel like they're more friends with each other mm-hmm. so they can say whatever's on their mind whereas with the imperials granted they take it to you know the extreme because but it's it's more rigid you can see the very clear defined chain of command mm-hmm. you know yeah, yeah. the Which rebel is always so much it was always fuzzy with with the rebels because i mean a smuggler blow you know shoots darth vader's tie fighter boom captain solo like instantly he's he's you know general solo like how you went from captain to general what the hell like and, like he just <laughs> one to the other yeah and it, and it just it and he, and he didn't even do anything in between he got frozen as captain solo and thawed out as general solo lando he betrayed the rebellion he betrayed han but hey let's just make him a general screw it that guy's been in the rebellion yeah. for 15 years but he doesn't <laughs> need the rank of general he doesn't know what he's doing let's nah. give that imperial defector yeah. a rank he used to make him an admiral that's a great <laughs> idea let's yeah. do that that'll be fun let's see how that plays out sorry i got animated on i just i didn't know that was bugging me that bad one thing i always found interesting and like brian being the uh the the canon master is reading up on what happened after indoor you know the formation of the new republic was that just boggled my mind is like 
We defeated the Empire. Well, there must be no other threats. Let's get rid of our military. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why? Are you insane? Are you kidding but then again, me? <laughs> but then again, if you remember, though, they're going back to what the Republic, old Republic did. Because mm. it wasn't until the Clone Wars happened that they had that to create an army. There was an army. You know, each individual system mm-hmm. was responsible for their own well, defense force. The New Republic did have a navy. They did have a, yes. a, a navy. You see it get destroyed with Hosni and Prime. If you look down in the corner, you can see some uh, Starhawks get, you know, they explode. Why not? Uh, but yeah, you would think, because I, I know Mon Mothma said something. She didn't want to have a military because she didn't want to be like the Empire. But you have to have some kind of defense force because there's a power vacuum there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like anybody, any like mining group, <laughs> like we like what like we saw in Mandalorian this past week. The mining groups, the second the Death yeah. Star blew up, there was a power vacuum. People yeah. wanted control instantly. And who's to say there was another faction out there? I mean, look at the First Order. They come out of nowhere. They they wanted power too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it was created after I get that. But it's another faction that comes up wanting power. You would have thought they would have had the foresight to kind of make sure they had some kind of defense force. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, again, I, I think they're just looking back to, you know, the, the old, but again, again, you think they would have learned from the old, you know, from the, yeah. the at that point where they were called the old Republic mm-hmm. to see like, yeah, not having a military might actually, you know, leaving each individual star system right. to deal with their own issues. And then, you know, at least with the Republic, the old Republic, they had the Jedi to fall back mm-hmm. on. If things got hot, they could always call on the Jedi to go in and take care, you know, take care of it. Well, in the new Republic, you really didn't have I mean, yeah, you have yeah, Luke. Luke. Yeah. You had Luke. Yeah. That that was that was and it. Luke's not on the present. And Luke was off you doing know, his own thing. At least at that point. Yeah. Yeah. What Fun would he have done though, anyway? So. Wind at him? I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna go back and get those <laughs> power converters. Four years later, I was gonna go get them. Fun fact about the end of Return of the Jedi. Now, though, that that ending when you see Coruscant, you see everybody celebrating. I don't know if anybody's noticed this. I just noticed it for the first time just recently. When everybody's celebrating at the bottom of the screen, when the camera's panning over, you can see them ripping a stormtrooper apart. Oh, cool. Like they're waylaying a stormtrooper, really? ripping him. He's like feet in the air, like he's upside down. They're ripping him apart. Yeah, it's definitely oh. satisfying to go watch. <laughs> it definitely is. Wow. Yeah. Just All I right. thought I'd throw that in there. I thought I'd throw that in there from a military point of view. That scares the hell out of me. <laughs> right. You, you know what I mean? Like. So. Welcome anyway. to reality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I never noticed it. That that, that um, was put in there ninety seven, and I never noticed it until just recently. I'll have to, I'll have to, yeah, have to watch that again. Yeah, definitely. It's been a while since I've gone back and watched the original trilogy. <laughs> it's always a fun time. Yeah. Is there any particular movie? I think we talked about Rogue mm-hmm. One. Solo was another one that I thought really brought the war home. On Mimbin. You know, yeah. especially that is that one scene with him, you know, in the battle, you know, in the mud. Yeah. You know, I think that also showed that, you know, we always see like the stormtroopers fighting the battles. That showed like, yeah, not everyone who fought actually, you know, held, you know, was a stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. You know, that's you know what what's funny about that scene too, and I laugh every time I see it, because the more I watch solo, the more it grows on me. Uh yeah, the scene you know where Han's trying to blackmail Beckett, and he's like, "Well, if you don't want to take me with you, I'm sure the lieutenant would be real interested in you." And you would think Han would realize that Captain outranks Lieutenant, but he doesn't realize that, and so he's just like, "Lieutenant, come over here," and he's like, "We've apprehended you," know? and he's like, "Oh, I should have known, Captain." And he's like, "Wait, what? You would you would have thought Han would have known? You know what I mean? Like the the command yeah. structure, but obviously not." It's just little <laughs> things like that. Like every time he's just like, okay, captain, I'm sure the lieutenant, will, lieutenant isn't going to give a damn. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing the lieutenant can even do about it. Yeah. So yeah. good times with that one. Yeah. <laughs> little, little things like yeah. that. Like, like I said earlier about Black Hawk down, there's little details and military things now that after being in the military, it just bugs the crap out of you. 
you know, a uniform being wrong, the, the, the headspace and timing on a 50 cal being wrong. It's, it just it blows your mind when you're seeing this stuff. And, and it goes for Star Wars, too. It really does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. Star Wars. That X-Wing was not. Yeah. What? <laughs> As I said, yeah, that, that X-Wing in that one episode was not. It didn't. It didn't open the. It, the uh, Why did the X Wings in A New Hope open their wings this far? Yeah. <laughs> but in Return of the Jedi, they're only like this. Right. Why? <laughs> they're the same damn X Wings. Yeah. The actuators are loose. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, they did change the X Wing. I noticed uh, uh, they did change the X Wing from um, the original trilogy to when you see them in the new the new trilogy. Right. They uh, they change the engine configuration. The, the turbine engine makes no sense now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how do you yeah. split a turbine engine? Yeah. And now Tie Fighter. Yeah, and now Tie Fighters have uh, have hyperdrive now. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and shielding. You know, yeah. going back to. So I'm sure I'm sure the first order pilots are like, I'm sure the old Imperial pilots are like, you could have done that. <laughs> We could have saved a lot of day, we didn't have shields. Yeah. Yeah. We used to have to fly up. No, no both ways. What's that? We only had one person in the cockpit. <laughs> well, going back to real life physics, that that always blew my mind too. How are you gonna have a turbine engine in outer space? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no air out there. What are you That's gonna funny. suck into that engine? Yeah. Stardust. Stardust. <laughs> Solar flares because oh, there were solar sails too. Fighter, Think about it. Solar wind true. had something that What's solar that? wind because you had solar sails in episode two. That Geonosian ship with the sail that went out front yeah. was catching solar sail a uh, solar yeah. wind. So I, I, that's I don't know if that's true or not. I just I just realistically that's the only one that actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Well, it, the it, kind it. of. Yeah. The tie kind of did because it was twin ion mm-hmm. used ions to power right. the engine. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's what the um, the giant things were. They were pick up ion solar power. They were solar powered ion engines. Right. That is the most green yeah. thing I've ever heard of in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish Joe was here. He'd be out in the. Uh, <laughs> See, the, like, empire, see, the, is, the empire cared about the environment and space. We care about the <laughs> we care about the environment. The empire cares about the environment. As they're blowing up a de- <laughs> Alderaan, they're just like we're just venting our gas into space. Don't yeah. worry about it. It's cool. <laughs> and no, no. He would say Joe would say that the empire that Tarkin single handedly ended. Um. <laughs> Unemployment. What would he say? Unemployment <laughs> on Alderaan. Unemployment yeah. single-handedly in one fell swoop. Hey, man, the Imperials tried. They had that big Death Star, and they vented it through a hole the size of a womp rat. They tried. They tried to keep the exhaust fumes <laughs> down. They were they were real. They were environmentalists, man. They were. <laughs> That's right. They tried their best. Good guy, Palpatine. <laughs> they even tried naturally powering their battle station with crystals like how more meta hippie can you get well do you figure like that was his platform when he was a senator like (laughs) make the universe green again green new deal (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh that's great i never thought of it that way (laughs) wow good guy empire they were they were yeah, so good bad. I mean, what's you know, a couple billion people dying oh, yeah. screaming in unison. I mean oh, yeah. <laughs> lovely singing voices too. You know, <laughs> the 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 whole think about it, everything in the Empire was solar powered. All the yeah. star I mean starfighters anyway, not necessarily the Star Destroyers, but almost every single one of their craft had those panels on them so they were all solar powered mm-hmm. <laughs> which makes you think unless they had a way to like store up store up the energy you know what did they do when they were near a star yeah true that's a good point damn you mark yeah. <laughs> how dare you make things make sense i know that that's that real world know. 
uh, real world logic you're trying to imply. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We don't have that. I here. feel like I have. You what? I have Yoda ju- looking. I have Yoda judging me. Now. I see him back there. <laughs> behind yeah. me. He he doesn't look impressed. Mean mugging. <laughs> he knows a thing no. or two about being green. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> he lived in a mud hole. He lived right. in a mud hole on a swamp planet. No electricity. Yeah. At all. Well, that was a hippie Jedi. That was a hippie Jedi right there. Mm-hmm. Used Qui-Gon's cloak as a or poncho as a cloak. Like just he I mean, we even saw stories of him hunting creatures. Yeah, he's a hippie. Yep. How 100%. could he not get behind the Empire, man? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I still say the greatest, the greatest, the greatest duel Yoda ever fought was not him against Dooku, was not him against Palpatine. It was him versus R2. Yep. That was, yes. You know, we watched Empire not too long ago and we got to that scene and, and, and Kirsty's like, does he not recognize R2? Because, I mean, they, they, they did the whole Clone Wars, like Yoda arc thing together. Like, well, how many astromech droids are there in the galaxy? You know, I mean, yeah, granted, he's blue and he's with a Skywalker, but I don't know. It's just, it's the same question of yeah. why why didn't Uncle Owen recognize three PO? Because there's thousands mm. of protocol droids in the galaxy, and what are the odds that that's the one that you used to own? And what, right. what are the that's yeah. that, no pun intended? The odds are astronomical. That that's the same mm-hmm. one, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And so, the last time we saw him, three PO didn't have his plating on yet, did he? Right. No, he was a different color. Yeah. Yeah. So he he wouldn't yeah. have known, you know. And you know, not to make it into like to go there, but when it comes to droids, I'm sure people looked at him, and you know, all the droids looked the same to them. Oh my god, droid rights, man! L three three seven would be so pissed right now. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. <laughs> just saying. I mean, good God, guy like Lars, he's just worried about his blue milk and you know getting that evaporator <laughs> up and running. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's so many things that questions that you. I think that's the that is the issue with with, with, with especially with prequels is you know where they're going to end, but it just a- ask. When you put something in a prequel, you know, a character in a prequel that doesn't show up in a sequel or does show up later and they act like they don't know who it is, that has so many questions. You're like, wait a minute, how did they not under how I don't remember ever owning a droid? <laughs> yeah. Well, that actually, that actually makes sense because yeah, he, he did. didn't. But Obi Wan did recognize R2. We found that out later he on. Did. He did recognize him. Yeah. So, yeah. So he, and he never and he never actually even if you want to say that he owned was it who was his droid that he R, had in the Clone Wars R four R four yeah it, had R four R four but that was gifted to him that was kind of given to him you know that wasn't actually his droid that was kind of like fighter, military equipment yeah What's that? yeah I don't think he ever left the Starfighter did yeah. he so he never actually technically owned a droid right you know. R2 was always Anakin's Anakin droid. droid. He was a gift from yeah. Padme. Because he, yes. he was Padme's droid, and then she gifted him to Anakin. Anakin, yeah. Yeah. So. So. And he was the only one. Oh, going back to one thing I never thought about of, you know, the one character who went through the most and you see is having that, you know, war veteran, you know, what I think a lot of soldiers go through was chopper. Yeah. 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 Chopper through some, and you see it in that scene where they're back on uh, Ryloth and you see the Y wing looking at that Y wing and you see him like, you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Oh, he's a, he's not just a normal droid. He's a he's yeah. a war veteran. He saw awesome. they yeah. they really did touch on that a lot in Rebels. Uh, that you know, yeah. especially when they brought the clones into it, and how bitter the clones were towards droids or towards Jedi. Even 
You know what I mean? And and even how mm-hmm. Kanan was wary of the clones and and back and forth. And yeah. one of the things Kanan said was, you know, not you can't not all scars <laughs> are physical. You know, and it's something that they really yeah. did drive home with that series. And it was something I could appreciate. And it was something that it was just, yeah, it just adds that other level of realism to it and kind of grounds everything yeah. so that it actually, yeah. it actually feels like that there's consequences. Me, like, yeah. It made me appreciate and like the, like Chopper even more. Cause before it was always like, oh yeah, Chopper's a little murder. He's a dick. You know, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And you're like, Okay, there's a reason why he acts the way he does. He's there's he's a droid if you're hanging off a cliff and he's at the top, you don't know if he's gonna pull you up or knock you the rest of the way off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean there's some scenes that I loved with Chopper. Like I love the scene where the other droid, like they have the droid that helps them help, you know, he that's just helped them escape, and they're talking about bringing him on the ship. Huh? And Chopper turns or unless they're back and Chopper to <laughs> pushes them off the like, oh well <laughs> and then you push it off like oh chopper yep. Cho- chopper's a bastard he really is he i hate to say it that way but i love it too i love the I, What's that? chopper's a bastard he is yeah. like i said Murder him Roy. and k2 would get along great chopper has played on with <laughs> He has one of the high uh, outside of like the Empire itself. <laughs> he has probably one of the highest body counts in all of Star Wars. <laughs> but yeah, no, you're right. You, they really did focus on that a lot, and and like you, because I think yeah. did they touch on it with Chopper first before the clones came so. into it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was the um, that was the introduction of Thrawn. Was it okay when they're on right? So that would have been yeah, season on three. Riot, they go to- yeah. yeah. Well, no, the clones were introduced in season yeah. two. Two. What's I think that? it was actually. I think the clones did come first before they before okay. they said anything yeah. about Chopper being a war veteran. I know Hera had brought it up a couple times, but then when they get there and the end, mm-hmm. he actually sees the Y wing that he was in when it crashed. You know, it, yeah. it's. It added a new level to Chopper and and kind of a uh, more of a personal story to him that you you know some people could sympathize with and go oh well makes sense why he's a dick now yeah you know yeah so. yeah well in each I mean and we can go into I mean we can do an entire episode just on Rebels mm-hmm. and how each character just brought so much gravitas you know, yeah. I think that's. <sighs> As much, I mean, I, I still love Clone Wars more, but I think Rebels is a vastly underrated series. Like, especially you start getting into like, you know, season, you know, late season one, mm-hmm. you know, season two on is just so much lore and so much. Yeah. Um, I love the way they did Vader. Yeah. In that, less is more. Yeah. You know, they brought Vader. I've always said this that Vader was the the boogeyman that's the way I was kind of picture him is like, you know, that he was the, he was the person that when kids around the, you know, when a kid was acting up, the mom would tell him like, you better behave or Vader will come and get you. It's funny. It's funny. You thing. bring that up because there's a new Canon book, the, the dark legends that has a story mm-hmm. like that. It has a story about an orphanage that these kids would go missing in the middle of the night. And there was stories mm. about this creature wearing black with a red lightsaber or with a red sword, but it wasn't Vader. It was the grand inquisitor. And he would come steal oh. kids out of their beds and they couldn't figure out why we know it's because they were force sensitive and he was taking them to go train them. But it's an awesome story, dude. And it's, it's, it's like what you said, that oh. boogeyman story. And it's, it's so cool. Yeah. 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 That, you know, you know, Vader was more myth than mm-hmm. led, more myth than anything else. Yeah. You know that. You know, it was it was the idea of Vader that was more terrifying. Yeah, you know, than almost almost more terrifying than Vader mm-hmm. himself, which made that scene where the uh, the governor um, has to go face Tarkin even more even more terrifying because, mm-hmm. like, just Vader's you know line of like 
you know, Tarkin wants to speak to you in his office and you're seeing the color drain from her face because she's like, I'd rather face Vader. Yeah. <laughs> like you see that look in her face like, oh, I'm dead. I'm literally dead. Well, keep in mind too how, uh, you know, everybody always talks about the Jedi and, and how a lot of people were like, well, I've never seen a real Jedi before. Were they real? And they had such a prominent role in the in the galaxy. There's only like 10,000 Jedi in a galaxy of billions. The odds of, of, mm-hmm. of you seeing a Jedi are basically zero in your life. <laughs> yeah. It goes the same with Vader during the Empire. Like how many people in the, in, in the galaxy ever even knew Vader was actually a real human, like a real being? You know, you, you hear these mm-hmm. stories about him and you're like, wait, what? And then... Some people saw Vader as a hero, depending on you know how he dealt with certain yeah. things, or from your point yeah, of view. Yeah, and, and and there's 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 a lot to that kind of like myth you were talking about. Yeah, well, even 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 with the the Emperor, mm-hmm. you know how the Emperor portrayed himself to the rest of the galaxy, mm-hmm. and how you know you see you know especially the, with some of the new canon stuff I've seen with you know he's not necessarily portrayed in like the old wrinkly faced, you know, you see pictures of him, you know, and on Coruscant, you know, you know, posters mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It was always chance, the chancellor right. Palpatine that, that, that visit, you know, so he, you know, they were very much, you know, yeah. keen in you yeah. know, promoting. And, and the way they handled that in rebels, when the emperor is talking to Ezra through the hologram and it's, and it's the yeah. younger emperor, and then you see it kind of like flash quickly between the two. Terrifying. That was freaking awesome. You know what I'm talking about? When it flashed yes. between the real one and the and the hologram. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. my god, that was cool. <laughs> oh, you know what? Talking mm-hmm. about the military thing, let's talk about the Millennium Falcon for a second. Because okay. I had a tank. I didn't have it for long, but I was on a tank for a while while I was in. When you went to hit the the master power button, it would go, and you'd have to hit it one time, and it would, and it would take <laughs> off, and it was the most Millennium Falcon thing I've ever seen in the military. That's awesome. It was nice. awesome. Yeah, it was. It was because the first time I hit that master power button, and you go to you hit the the start engine button, and it would go, and then it would just kind of fizzle out. I'm like, wait, what's what's going on? And my specialist at the time was like, just hit it, and I was like, hit it once and kick on and there it went <laughs> every time that's what it was every single time oh that's <laughs> so i have to know did you ever did you ever underline it's not my fault i have said it's it. not my I fault i said that a lot there was there's several times that it's not my fault they told me they fixed it yeah that was <laughs> that happened a lot that's great yeah so Wow. But yeah, I I had oh, the Millennium right. Falcon. Well, I think it's time to start wrapping things up here. What's no, that? I was just I had the Millennium Falcon while I was in the army. I thought it was absolutely awesome. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, I still hold that deer. Oh. I really did. I thought it was cool. Uh, anyway, sorry. Go ahead, Mark. I was go ahead. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Um. Let's wrap things up here, uh, Brian. Since you are the guest here, why don't you tell people where they can hear you at? All right, you guys can find me at the Star Wars Canon Podcast. Uh, it's going to be coming back very soon. I've got three new co-hosts that are going to be joining me. I know they're anxious to get on the mic, uh, and we've got a big episode lined up for the uh, for the big return of the podcast. Something we've never done before. Something we're excited about. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and we're going to do a little bit of a different format with the podcast, I think. We've talked a little bit about how we're going to do it. You guys can find that podcast on anchor.fm slash Star Wars Canon Podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcast, I think CastBox and Stitcher as well. Uh, and you guys can also find that podcast on the Star Wars Canon Library mobile app, available now on Google Play. It will be coming out on uh, the App Store for iOS this spring, so keep an eye out for that. If you guys download that app, uh, there's, there's a whole Canon timeline on there, everything broken down by story arc, year, color. It's all color-coded. Uh, links to find all of the Canon stuff if you want to buy it or, or download it or have it sent to your house or, or just watch it right there inside the app. That's all there, a community page, upcoming Canon, uh, a link to the YouTube channel for the Star Wars Canon podcast, just all kinds of stuff on there on that on that mobile app. Uh, cover art for everything, something that I think is really useful for people who want to keep up on Canon. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, yeah. that is on the Google Play Store as well. I can vouch for that. It's very cool. Uh-oh. Um, there he is. 
There you go. You froze up for a second. <laughs> oh, sorry. You guys have been freezing up too. <laughs> uh oh. And let me find it. <laughs> Oh, there it is. <laughs> Star Wars Canon Library mobile app. I Sweet. Have, there it is. I have it on my phone. Sweet. Accessing it. My phone's running slow oh. today. So, <laughs> so yeah, I have it. It's a very cool app. And um, we will be part of that too here pretty soon. As, um, uh, yeah, we're going to be our, our link to our show will be on there too before too long, hopefully. Just got to get everything put together. Um, but yeah, take your time. You know, no rush. Fair enough. Do it now. <laughs> Do it. No. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Uh, Ray, why don't you tell people where they can find you on the interwebs? Yep, you can go to Facebook, Instagram, or the tweeters and type in the Leo effects, and that's uh, pretty much the fastest way to contact me in some shape or form. You can also find me here at War of the Stars. You can find me on Tuesdays on uh, twitch.tv slash Shattered Tabletop Gaming, playing Shattered Dungeons. Um, and then uh, once a month, we do One Crit Blunders, and that's also on Facebook. That's a 5e d d game. That's about it, I think. All right. All right. And as for us right here, as always, if you want to get a hold of the show, you can do so by emailing us at war of the stars one at gmail.com that is also our twitter handle uh you can hear us each and every week on anchor.fm forward slash war of the stars we're also on uh spotify uh google google podcasts uh apple podcasts pretty much anywhere fine podcasts are heard you can also check out the Facebook page at War of the Stars and the Facebook group War of the Stars. And also, don't forget, each and every week now, you can hear myself, Brian Miller, and our other co-host, Miss Melissa Miller, each and every week as we break down the newest episode of The Mandalorian. Check it out at That Was The Way. Um, uh, YouTube, That Was The Way 2020. You can find us there. That's the best place to place. Or also on uh, anchor.fm forward slash that was the way. Check it out. Really fun show. Uh, we have a lot of we had a lot of fun There's talking. That. Gremlins. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, yeah. We had a lot of fun last uh, this past Monday talking the Mandalorian. So looking forward to talking Mandalorian again. Uh, let's see. I think that is about it. Uh, hit Twitter, Facebook, email. Oh, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash War of the Stars. Again, we've been trying to do this for a while. First 12 Patreons that sign up. Uh, you will be entered into a drawing to win a $20 Walmart gift card. And uh, so, yeah, you could win something. So try it. <laughs> uh, anyway, that will wrap it up for us this week. Uh, join us again next week as I have no idea what we're going to be talking about, but I will find something <laughs> out. Uh, until then, remember, this isn't just my Star Wars. This isn't just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the Force be with you. Always. I guess we lost... Uh, Ray. Ray. Way to go, Ray. Ray. What did you do? Ray? What What did you do? <laughs> that was fun. There was a few times where I'm just like, oh, crap, I don't know what to talk about. No, crap, good. I didn't prepare for this enough. <laughs> no, you're good. Like, crap, 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 crap. No, you're all right. Yeah. That was the whole yeah. point of it, though, man. Yeah. 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 So. I do think for, for uh, I'm going to start getting a little bit more prepared for um, the other, for our, the after show, you yeah. know, actually take notes. That was the problem was I didn't actually take notes for the last episode. So this, this next episode, I'm actually going to sit down and take notes and 
write it, write stuff down. And yeah, I will give you a tip. You're okay. still recording. Ha, 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 ha.